Here's an example of a genuine single channel model. The airframe is a Mercury Matador, 50 inch span, maybe slightly larger, constructed in a very similar fashion to the Junior 60, it's a square section, formers, nylon and doped, that's one of the reasons this 50 year old plus airframe has survived so well, and uh, it's had a couple of modifications from the original Mercury, it's had extra leg strut there to make it more robust. The nose has been shaped a little bit different, it looks more scale like a Cessna, and it's been made knockoff. This had a couple of advantages. First of all, it made it very easy to trim by putting packing pieces in there for down thrust or at either side. Then you could transfer those to washers and set the engine thrust lines accurately later. Also, if you had a crash, which is quite frequent in those days, uh, the nose would knock off and hopefully save damage to the engine and the airframe. It's covered in a matte silver, it's a matte silver and a blue colour scheme. There's the original Mercury decal on the wing, and uh, very much like the SMA colours. That's the metal work at the back that operates the linkage for the single channel actuator. So if we look inside, <coughs> we can see that uh, there's the actual actuator. You can just see the, the rubber there for the actuator. I had to replace that, and uh, obviously the batteries, but wiring's in superb condition, there's no corrosion. The blue box there is the RCMNE Supertone. It's a super head receiver and excellent performing device. It's got great range as the setup. This is the transmitter that goes with it. It's a, a McGregor MR200 single channel set. There were thousands and thousands of these sold. They worked well. So if we look at it in operation, you can see the actuator. You can actually hear it singing as well. It's very simple. Basically what it does, press and hold the transmitter, it goes one way, and back to neutral. Press and hold it, it goes the other way. That's why it's called sequential. So it's left rudder, neutral, right rudder, neutral. If you want it to continually pulse left, you have to skip through. So that gives you left, and then you have to do two keys to get back to left. The downside of this was you only have a finite amount of winds on that escapement rubber. Eventually it could run down so you'd have no control, or worse still, it would stick on and spiral in. Absolutely superb find is this. I have no doubt that it's not perfectly flyable. The engine's got good compression. This is a lesson here in how to store things. Again, this engine can't have been used for 30 years. All it needed was a tiny drop of diesel fuel in. Off it went. Again, no batteries stored in, there's no corrosion. It's not being stored in a damp, wet environment. Here's the transmitter. And you can see transmitter main casing's in good condition. And uh, there's no corrosion in there to see. There's a slight little bit of corrosion on the uh, transmitter back case. Somebody obviously left the, the battery in this and forgot about it but uh, not evident on any other circuit board. In fact, the range is superb. We tested it, and uh, I got fed up of walking away. So, a great model from the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s. It was a, an alternative to the Junior 60. I'm very tempted to fly it. Thanks for listening.